Hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to be showing you how to do uh, what we refer to as basic corrective stage makeup. Um, before we get started, I just do have to say I have a little bit of an issue with that being the name of it. Um, the thought that there needs to be something corrected about your face, I fully disagree with. Um, it's not so much that there's anything wrong just that when you get on stage and the lights hit, uh, it does change and bring out a lot of things. You can see that I have a lot of redness and that kind of thing. And when I get on stage, it's just boom, red. Um, it also, stage lights flatten your face and the features. So when we talk about basic corrective, it's just molding the face so that it can be visible and you can use your face and all the expressions uh, from stage, from, you know, aesthetic distance 20 feet away. So calling it corrective, bit of a misnomer. Don't think there's anything about your face that needs to be corrected. Your face is perfect the way it is. We're just going to sculpt it for the stage, okay? So um, I am using Ben Nye. Uh, that is, you know, what we're using for this class. There are others, there are Mehron, there are all kinds of others that you can use, but what we're using is Ben Nye Cream Makeup. Uh, if you have questions about other brands, I'm happy to answer them for you. Uh, but we are using Ben Nye. So the first thing you do is you start with base. Um, I am very pale, in case you haven't noticed. So I use the Super Super uh, Fair. Um, it is possible sometimes that you have to mix colors, right? If you have yellow undertones or if you have pink undertones that don't quite match up perfectly, you can layer colors on. So if you need to put on a darker color and then one that's slightly lighter or vice versa, you can absolutely do that. Um, but if you're one of the lucky ones, it just from the beginning is perfectly matched and you're ready to go. So um, I'm starting with my ultra beige. That is what I use. And um, always start with a clean face. Um, you're cleaned, uh, you're, you're cleansed, I should say, and you are uh, moisturized, right? You wanna get that moisture barrier on there because this can be really difficult on your skin. Um, so really, I cannot stress this enough, really do take care of your skin. So I just use my regular triangle that comes in here, right? And just really start going. You can already see how it's matching the uh, paler parts of my face, but covering up that redness, right? Go up into the hairline, yes. I also, um, you do not have to use this. This is just a personal preference, but I do like using brushes uh, sometimes as opposed to triangles. So that is entirely up to you, whichever you wanna use. I do recommend uh, that you don't put it on with your fingers, simply because uh, I'm not saying you can't use your fingers. Sometimes that it does work best to kind of, you know, dab things in and mix them in with your fingers, but your fingers, your hands, uh, that's where the bacteria lives, right? And we are in a time of COVID right now, so we don't want to be, you know, touching our faces too much and also it can cause breakouts, right? You will notice I'm going down on my neck just a little bit. Uh, you do not have to go all the way down, right? This isn't full body makeup. That's not what we're here to do. But you do wanna blend it in just a little bit going down your neck because remember, the point is for it to match your skin tone, not to um, hide it, but also you are going to be under really harsh stage lights, right? And so if it hits, the last thing you want is the, you know, makeup line. Nobody wants that. All right. So that has evened out my skin tone, right? And giving me a nice slate to start my contouring on, right? So you can see no lines, nothing like that. It matches pretty well. Um, you can see right around my eyes where it's a little bit red. That's just me. That's not, a, that's not 
a thing. That's just how my face works. Um, if you're looking at your base and you're like, wow, that is just really too pale for me or really too dark for me. Like I said, go back, mix and match, see what works best for you. The last thing you want to do is to completely change the tone of your um, basic corrective. That's not what we're here to do. The only time you really change your uh, skin tone is when you're doing things like someone who's sick or something like that, which is something that we'll talk about in a different uh, lesson. So, boom, boom, I've got a little bit of lines. I'm gonna go in and give it a little bit of this, right? Face. So the next thing you want to do is start the uh, business of contouring. Again, this is where we really want to create the three dimensional, or rather enhance the three dimensional features of your face so that uh, it really pops when it's on stage. Um, if you've ever watched makeup tutorials or anything, or if you wear makeup regularly, you're already very well versed in contouring. Um, this is not gonna be exactly like beauty makeup though, right? When we refer to beauty makeup, that's what we're talking about, the Instagram influencers and that kind of thing. Uh, this is to make your face look bare. And I know that seems really counterproductive, right? Because we're covering ourselves in makeup. But this is to make your face look bare and normal on stage. Now, sometimes you will add beauty makeup to it, right? You're doing a character, people wear makeup. So sometimes you'll add that, but this is just going to be the very basic, right? Sculpting the face for stage light. So you start with your highlights. And what you're gonna do is really get to know your face before you start this, right? You need to spend some time under some really harsh downlight so you can see how light hits your face. I mean, you can already see it a little bit, right? You can see how the light hits right there, right? It hits across my brow, yeah? It hits here. So basically the, the places that really stick out on your face, right? So that's gonna be where you sort of start. And you start with your highlight, yeah? It says cream highlight and one of your brushes. And as you start, you really do start by just sort of drawing straight lines, right? On those places where the light hits. Right? It's gonna hit right here. It's gonna hit right here. Yeah, it's also gonna hit on my cheeks. And this is a place, if there are things that you do want to enhance or, or maybe downplay a little bit, this is where you can get into that. But you don't want to completely restructure your face, right? The casting director or the director clearly likes what they saw. So you're just sort of enhancing what's already there. And yeah, it looks a little bit sloppy when you first put it on and that's fine because what you're gonna do is come in with your triangle, right? And you're gonna start blending. Now, this is how you do it with a triangle, right? You just see these little boop, boop, boops. I am a huge fan of the Beauty Blender, right? You dip it in water, it make, it's actually, when it's dry, it's about a third of this size, you dip it in water and it's just a really great tool kind of go in and blend, right? And you can see I'm just kind of dabbing because you don't want to pull really hard on your skin, right? It's sensitive, It'd be nice to it. Yeah. So after you have your highlights, you know, you can still see, it's not, when I say it's blended, it doesn't disappear. You can still see where the highlight lives. So after you do that, you're gonna come in with your shadow, right? And again, get to know your face, look at how the light hits it, right? So you come in with a clean brush, you've wiped it off. You don't wanna cross contaminate, right? So you wipe it off with your uh, wipe or just use a clean brush. 
and then you come in with your shadow. So I'm going to come down the side of my nose, right? And these are those places where, again, you can make little changes if you need to. Um, for instance, I broke my nose when I was a kid, so it's a little bit offset. So this is a chance for me, if I would like, to come in and sculpt around it and kind of straighten it back up. You want to come in under your cheekbone, right? You can come in around your chin. And it's okay if it's a little bit off because you're going to blend it, right? You can really define your jawbone if that's something that you want, right? Sometimes it's even nice to come in right in here. If you have a really high forehead like me, you may want to shape, you know, I've got a five head, so you may want to shape it a little bit like that. And then come in again and blend. This is why I like the Beauty Blender, because I can roll. I can roll it. And I just feel like I have a little bit more control over what I'm doing. Got a rogue curl. Apologies. Now, after you have sort of the basics done, it's a good time to go in and sort of refine anything. So for instance, I have a lot of shadow up here, so I'm gonna come in with my Beauty Blender and just sort of make sure that my, head, my forehead doesn't look like one big shadow, right? nose needed a little bit more blending, right? That needed a little more blending. But you can see how it's starting to sculpt the face, right? Up close, yes, you can tell I have makeup on, but the further away I get, it all just starts to sort of look normal and natural. That's what you're going for with the basic corrective. You can still almost kind of see how my nose kind of goes like that, right? So if I really wanted to, I could come in and just sort of do like that. And it straightens my nose back up, right? Little things like that. You also can see and again, this is where you really get to know your own face. I have really heavily lidded eyes. So you can see that the hood, the lid of my eye up here touches my actual eyelid my eyes are open. So if you want, you can go in and mold those things a little bit better. Um, one way I can show you how I do it and you can do it if you want or not. It's entirely up to you right? So I go in and I put some highlighter right under my eye brow, which seems counterproductive because you're like, Donna, what are you doing? You're trying to make that look a little bit better. Well, you can see that that makes it stand out. And then I'll come in with my shadow and just sort of raise the crease of my eye. So I'm molding it way up here. 
right? Then I can come in again with my highlight and go right underneath that. So that when I come in with my blender and just sort of tap it out a little bit, I've now created more there there so I have now created a false crease in my eyes done and done All right, so now that I have that done, um, the next thing you want to do is powder, right? Because you're always putting cream on cream, powder on powder, right? So once you get everything done that's cream-based, so your highlights, your shadows, your base, all of that, then you move to powder, create the powder layer, and then on top of that, you can do things like your rouge, your eye makeup, everything like that. So let's talk about powder. Okay, if you want to anger your costume staff, don't powder enough. The one thing that we spend the most time doing in laundry is getting makeup out of costumes, right? Because you do not want your actor going on stage with the ring of makeup right here. And it happens all the time. It is incredibly irritating. Do not do it. And the way you do that is with powder. You're going to feel like you're using too much. I assure you, you are not. You cannot use too much powder. It is physically impossible. If you think that you've used too much, add one more layer. Just do it. Your costume crew will thank you. And if you ever work costume crew, you'll know what I'm talking about. So we have translucent powder, right? and your brush or your puff rather. Now, the way you're going to do it with it, you have it in a little shaker, you know, it comes in a bigger thing. You can just dip your powder in or your puff in. If it comes in a shaker, you're going to want to shake it out. All right, boop, boop, boop. And then you're going to want to rub it in. Really get it into the velour pile, right? Then you'll come in and you're, you don't wanna wipe, right? You see people just wiping powder, that is not what you want to do because you're going to wipe away all of the contouring you just did. So what you wanna do is come in and press it into your skin. Then you come in with a little bit more, rub it in and press it. And you can see that it's leaving little bits of powder on top. That's fine. Keep pressing it in. As I said, you can never use too much. Make sure you're going in the creases. And if you're doing this correctly, it should take you four or five minutes to completely powder your face. 
honestly. If it's not taking you that long, you are not doing enough. And again, we've pressed. If you see any sort of residue, that means you haven't pressed it into the skin enough. But once you've got it, once you have it all done, and you can see this is why we wear smocks and shirts that we don't care about getting dirty. Once you've done all of that, if you have a, um, a big makeup uh, powder brush, then you can absolutely sort of go around and give it a little bit of this. right? But if you've got a whole lot of it flying off, that means you didn't press enough. So you need to go back and do it again. This is just a way to sort of get that last layer of dusting off in the event that you did over powder. I've never met anyone who had, but it happens. And now you're powdered and ready to go. So now you're going to do those last few things that just sort of really make everything pop and look natural. Because if you see, yes, I'm contoured. Even if I pull back, you can still see all of my features. If I were under stage lights, you would see it molded even better. But there are still a couple things that you need to do just to make it look natural instead of like a mask that you have painted on, right? And one of them is rouge or blush. So if you look at your um, cream contour wheel, it's got these colors right here, right? Um, you can actually use this before you powder if you would like. Uh, if that works best for you, you can use one of these colors, right? And just sort of, you know, rouge out a little bit. Um, I don't do that. I use the actual, um, this what's called Victorian Rose uh, blush or rouge. Um, and you have your little brush that comes with Ben Nye, right? Or if you have a, a separate set of brushes, you can use it. And you just want to dust lightly along your cheekbone, right? We are not here to make ourselves look like painted women of the evening. We're just here to give ourselves a little bit of the natural blush, right? That natural coloration that comes into um, having human cheeks, all right? And again, if you were going to do beauty makeup, this is exactly where that would happen, right? This is where you can start doing things like if it were the 80s, then you would do something that was really bright pink. Or if it were the 1920s, then you would just have a little, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but that is, you know, kind of what you're going to do. And it's not out of uh, fashion to give just a little bit of dusting, right, on your uh, nose, forehead, and cheeks, just because it gives you that nice sort of rosy, um, warm human look, right? We shouldn't have to try to look like humans, but it's theater. Here we are. The next thing you want to do is uh, come in with your eyeliner, right? All right, it says eyebrow pencil. It's fine, you can still use it as an eyeliner, right? When you first get it, it is a hard, hard point. That's going to hurt, right? So it's okay to kind of whittle that down just a little bit. Um, rub it on uh, your skin that heats it up and, and gets it to um, the, the temperature of your skin. If you have, um, I can't use, you know, I can't do it with my ring light because it's an LED, but if you have sort of an older um, non-LED lamp or light bulb, you can hold it up to that and it will melt it just a little bit. It's great, but you know, we're energy efficient now. And that means we can't do that. So you want to just kind of get it down where it's not quite so sharp. Now, this is again where basic corrective versus beauty, right? For basic corrective makeup, when you put on your eyeliner, you do not want to connect it at the corners of your eyes because that's going to make it look like your eyes are really closed. 
if you're doing a beauty makeup, you may have to do that, or you may do a wing tip or something like that, but that is not what we're doing. We are just doing the basic uh, standard corrective, so we're wanting to make sure our eyes look open and pop. So I'm gonna get really close now. It's gonna get a little bit awkward. Here we go. So you wanna come in, right? Don't pull your eye really hard because that's how you're gonna get wrinkles. Nobody wants that, but just sort of pull it to the side and go right along your lash line, right? And you can see that it just sort of goes right along, right? Do you see the difference in my eyes? This one's just a little bit more defined. Then you'll come, and again, you saw that I went right inside. I didn't start it until about right here, right? Right along there. You're gonna do the same on the bottom. You're not gonna go all the way to the edge. You're just gonna come right inside. And you see I'm not really like pulling it really hard. You're just wanting to sort of stabilize it a little bit. And yes, I have to keep my mouth open when I do this. So do you see the difference in my eyes, right? See how this one looks quite frankly bigger, right? And more open than this one. That is what you're going for, right? It's not going all the way to the edge here or here. It's just making sure it's defined. You can also come in to make it look a little more open. Like if you have sort of um, eyes that are, you know, really close set or something like that. You can come in with your small brush, right? And just dip it in the clown white that you have. And you don't want a lot, but you can just sort of dip it and, and mute it a little bit. And you can put just a little bit of white right there and right there. Dab it out. Again, this is one of those rare times when you can use your finger. Dab it out and you see how that opened my eye up even more? That's what you want because when you get on stage, right, what are the three things that in the, the three basic tools of an actor are their face, their body, their voice. And you wanna be able to get those really intense sort of facial expressions that we can do um, and, and make it readable. So that's what you're going for. All right, so as you can see, rather than make you sit through me doing the other eye, I went ahead and did it separately. Um, the next thing you wanna do, uh, and this is not in your kit, so it's something, one of those things you have to add to it, is mascara. Um, there's always a debate about mascara versus false eyelashes on stage. And I'll be completely honest, I'm in the mascara um, camp. And here's why. Sometimes false lashes are needed, again, for a period piece. If you're doing something in the 1960s, you want those big flashy lashes, that kind of thing. I completely understand. But the current beauty trend that we see um, is those big, floofy lashes. And they are beautiful. I love them. But when you get them on stage, they just engulf the face, right? They block the eyes because the lighting is coming straight, you know, coming at an angle. If you have a good, eye, a good lighting designer, they're doing it at the right angle, but then it hits those lashes and it just looks like you've got spiders crawling on your face. Again, beautiful and lovely and perfect for day wear if that's how you wanna get down, but for stage, I just don't like it. Um, I will be doing a thing later in the semester of how to do false lashes for those of you who want to see how it's done. But for basic corrective, I just like mascara. So you just come in with your mascara and just give yourself a little bit of, oh, hang on, I've got a little something there on the end, a little bit of definition, right? So it's just going to, it's a really good idea to sort of shake it back and forth. You can see that it sort of lengthens it, right? If you want to curl your lashes, that's also a good idea. 
but I'll be completely honest, have a bit of an eye thing. I don't like things coming at my eye. Um, I was in my 20s before I even got accustomed to wearing mascara and eyeliner because I have such an eye thing. So um, coming at my eye with an eyelash curler just really isn't my idea of a good time. And again, we're not here to make it look beautiful or stylish or anything like that. We're just here to give some definition. And yeah, you see me opening my mouth because again, it can't be done without it. A little bit on the bottom, right? Not as much as on the top. Just a little bit. Done and done. All right, so the last thing you want to do uh, to finish out your basic corrective look is your lips. Um, you have seen, as I have put uh, makeup on, my lips have sort of slowly disappeared into uh, the rest of my face because everything else is being enhanced. Now it's time to do the lip. Um, you do have a lip pencil, right? That is very useful, uh, especially uh, as you, you know, start getting older like me, right? You start getting those little lines and it makes the, the lip color sort of bleed in. We don't like that. Um, again, this is where corrective versus beauty, right? If you're doing beauty makeup, and a lot of times, especially for women, or for female characters, I should say, um, you're gonna have a, a lip color that is indicative of the character and the time period, right? But we're doing basic corrective, so you want it to be natural. Now, everyone's lip color is just a little bit different, the natural lip color, right? So that is why you have this cream contour wheel, because it has a few different options, right? Any three of these, not the black, clearly, um, the black is there, actually it's really useful, not only for character where you need straight black, but also to darken any of these other colors, right? You can take a little bit out and then add just a smidge of the black to it and mix it up and it will darken the color so that's more natural to you. So any of these would work for me, right? This one would probably be a little dark, it would look like a color, but either of these two will work. Now I'm gonna go with this one right here, right? Because it closely matches my Plum Rose lip liner and because it just better matches my lip, right? A Little bit not suitable for work, maybe, question mark? It's all right, I'll just say it. Look at your nipple color. Your nipples and your lips 95% of the time are going to be almost the same color. I don't know why. It's an evolutionary thing I've never been able to understand. Don't really want to know why. But if you're looking for a natural lip color, nipples. So, you're just gonna come in, right? And just gently line. You can see, you can't really see it, and that's kind of the point. You can also, just FYI, you can get clear, see-through, like just completely clear lip liners, which are really helpful because then you don't have to buy one for every lip color you get. So you're just gonna come in, all right? And just go around the edge. I went a little further down than anticipated. It's okay. This is also really good um, when you get into, again, if you're wanting little things to correct, not correct, enhance, um, or if you're doing specific characters, right? If you want to change the um, shape of your lips, you can do it with lip liner, right? Because I have this really nice full bottom lip, right? It's really nice. But then I have this sort of thin villainous upper lip. But I do have a really nice Cupid's bow. So if you're wanting to make your lips look smaller, you go inside of your lip line just a little bit, right? And then you cover the outside with your base. If you're wanting to make it look more full, you go just slightly outside. Now don't go crazy, don't come way up here, right? That's something we'll do when we cover drag, but um, camp drag specifically. But you can just kind of, so if I wanted to make my top lip look a little more full, again, we're gonna get really close now. You can see I can go just outside of it instead of right on the edge. Mm 
right? And again, that just sort of holds that color in as you get on stage and you start, you know, moving and spitting, let's be honest. Then you come in with your clean brush. You can use your fingers if you would like, but again, it's touching your mouth. So, you know, think about it. My lips are a little dry, I apologize. And you can absolutely put on a little bit of um, lip gloss or chapstick or something like that and that will help it uh, move around on your lips a little bit more. But just know that if you put any kind of base under your lip color, it will come off, right? You have created that moisture barrier, so it will come off as you go. And we don't want that happening on stage. So just keep that in mind. Done and done. So the last thing you need to do, you got your eyes, you got your lips, you got everything. The last thing you need to do is to make sure that you define your brows. And again, that's just because everything else has been enhanced, so these are kind of disappearing, right? There are a couple ways you can do this. Um, if you have, well, I know you have in your kit, you have uh, the eyebrow pencils, right? You can go through with that, do the same thing. It's a little sharp, you don't want it too sharp. And you can just go through and sort of fill in, right? You see, I'm not coming straight at it like this. I'm doing it in kind of at the side in these little, right? And again, if you have, you know, like I have sort of really bushy eyebrows right here and then it thins out, this is a good way to even that out. If you wanna give yourself a little bit of an arch, right? You can absolutely do that right in there. Totally cool, boom. Or uh, there are a lot of products out on the market right now. This is one that I have. Um, music flower liquid eyebrow pen. Got it on Amazon, it's pretty cheap. And you can see it has these sort of three little, boop, right there. So you can mimic the look of hair, eyebrow hair. So you just come in and really gently You don't want to go too hard because that's how you end up like drawing it on. Just like that. And you can see they're two different colors because this one's a different product. It's a little bit darker. So I'm just going to come over here and even it out just for the sake of the look, which is probably the most awkward thing I've ever said for the sake of the look. Done and done.